So the stock market community has been talking a lot about Johor with data centers and all that. But we think that there's one state that has very interesting potential mm. uh, as quite a few companies actually in the state and that is uh, Sarawak. Yeah. So guys, I'll be organizing an upcoming webinar where I'll be showing you how we in the Viral team generated 25% returns in the first quarter of 2024. So if you're interested in what strategies that we were using, then you really need to hop on to this webinar. Link to sign up is in the description or comments. If you look at the first chart here, what we're trying to tell you is that Sarawak is a very significant state, right? Whenever we think of uh, the top economic performing state, economically performing states in Malaysia, of course, number one is Selangor slash KL. I lump them together. Okay. Uh, and then the next would be either a Penang or a Johor, yeah. right? Penang is right. You know, all the semiconductor companies are there. Then Johor is right beside Singapore. Uh, but we often ignore East Malaysia and specifically Sarawak mainly. Oil and gas, right? That's what they do. Yeah, oil and gas, agriculture, your palm oils, and some of the mining stuff. Uh. Yeah. And also uh, wood. And you can see the contribution to GDP is actually a lot uh, bigger. Mm. Yeah, exactly. Right, than Penang. Not yeah. a lot bigger, but bigger. Right? Yeah. Uh, although the GDP contribution has like kind of declined uh, over the years from 2015 to 2022. But yeah, and, and you would expect that because oil and gas is not as relevant as before. So. Yeah. But uh, what's impressive is that the, if you look at the percentage of them representing Malaysian population versus the GDP that they contribute in 2022, uh, actually it's pretty good. It's like it's only like a quite a small amount of people but then they managed to like contribute quite massive uh yeah. contribution uh this, this is the same for penang as well small island but then uh the contribution to the country yeah. is very good johor slacking yeah yeah yeah, <laughs> yeah. all right yeah. So, so here is the yeah. sector composition yeah and they are kind of going to be uh upgrading uh so you can notice right there's this sector composition uh in terms of their contribution towards GDP, uh, you notice that service and manufacturing both are going up. Mining and agriculture, uh, agriculture are toning down a little bit, uh, which means they are kind of like moving up the uh, value chain. Uh. They're right. going to be focusing more on the downstream or value add the downstream activities and uh, maybe making the upstream more efficient, uh, to put it that way, and less people need to do uh, upstream works. Uh. Uh, and yeah, so they come up with this thing called the PCDS recently. So it's called the Post-COVID-19 Development Strategy for 2030. What it basically means is, it's basically like our wawasan 2020, but it's for uh, Sarawak. Yeah, so you can Not very see. catchy, Sarawak. Uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, Not yeah. very catchy. So if you notice uh, the basic things, they just want to like improve their economic structure. Uh, they want to enhance productivity and efficiency. They also want to adopt okay, this digital. Okay, okay. And then household uh, income. Uh, okay, okay, let's let's stop there. Okay. Yeah, yeah. So I, I think it's definitely moving in the right direction, but I would like to highlight this, okay? I think this objective of going from 20, in, in 2019 or 4.5K median income to 15K <laughs> in 11 years. And by the way, out of the 11 years, five has already passed. Okay, I'm not sure what the median income household is today, but regardless, uh, just to get numbers, it is quite ridiculous because uh, not in terms of its realism, three times increase mm. in 10 years. Yeah, it's a very optimistic. That is a double digit, uh, it's a teens percentage every year. Mm. I cannot do the math in my head. Yeah. But look, if we double in 10 years, that's 7% every year, which most industries do not give 7% increment. So if you want to triple, that's past 10%. Yeah, definitely. Uh, yeah. Not realistic unless you have some magic that I, I do not know about. Mm, yeah, uh, but that is their objective uh, for 2030. Uh, we shall see how, uh, you never know. Uh, and these are the few developments that they are trying to like uh, drive around the Sarawak economy. Uh, so you can see that there's a few things. I The one thing that I highlighted is those that are related to the sector. So manufacturing growth, they want to increase that. Commercial agriculture, improve the, uh, tourism and all those kind of things, the transportation and even the green energy initiatives. Uh, we are not going to go through all this because there's a few companies or stocks related to uh, that's related to this uh, development that we shall see later. Okay, so the first one is Bintulu. Uh, I'm going to pop up with my telegram over here because I wrote some notes in my telegram. So the first one is Bintulu. I think 
last year, 2023, they did manage that they want to private or take over, privatize, okay. uh, privatize Bintulu. Uh, and in, you can notice that the share price also kind of like bump up 14% as a result of this. Uh, and they're going to be materializing. I, I, I'm, I think it's materializing or by June 2024. Okay. So, which is another three months from now. And the Sarawak state government, if I can remember, uh, they own about... 50% and then the remaining 20% is like another major shareholder that is related to their business activity. So I think all up, if you act together, it's like they own 70%. Uh, so they have to like accumulate shares from the public and even EPF and all those stuff, KWAP. EPF ADC is to be substantial shareholder, sorry. Uh, KWAP and other uh, uh, fund managers, uh, they have to buy the remaining 30%, uh, which means probably there is some sort of a little bit upside, assuming if let's say they want to like uh, I don't know uh, if there's a lot of transaction going around, but so far it has been pretty illiquid. And basically what they want to privatize is just that they want to make the uh, connect, they want to improve the connectivity. That's what they say. And they also they want to stabilize some of the uh, airfare costs. So that is according to the Sarawak state government. So here we go. The first stock idea for Sarawak is uh, Pintulu. Hello, investors. Are you tired of going through endless complex financial reports? Maybe you're sick of all the information overload. One, a faster, easier way to research stock investments? Well, we've got the solution for you. Introducing Firo Pro. Firo Pro is your go-to source for concise, easy to understand stock reports. We shortcut your research journey by 90%. Each report is crafted to be straightforward yet informative, taking no more than 15 minutes to read. That's right, just 15 minutes to unlock key insights about stock investments. The program works especially well if you are busy with work, family, and activities. The best part, it's totally risk-free because we offer a hassle-free money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied after purchasing it, just email us here within 10 days of purchase for a full refund. No questions asked. Not sure about the program yet? No problem. You can check out our free sample reports available in the video description or comments below. It's a great way to experience the Firo Pro advantage firsthand. Get informed with Firo Pro. Uh, second one is Digital Bank. So I think also last year they bought a little bit share of uh, Afin Bank. They bought about 4.95% stake. Uh, this is in order for them to tap on the digital economy. Uh. They want to try to, they try to like get this digital bank license, but they fail to do so. Uh, but we shall see whether they will I'm still continue to do Help that. me understand why Afin is so linked to Sarawak. This one, you have to have to do more deeper research. Uh, okay. I'm not too sure yet. Yeah, but okay, anyway, okay. you can see that the share price also pump up because as a result of them buying some shares. Uh. Okay. Okay, Green Hydrogen. Uh, oh, they changed their name. Yeah, oh. Green Hydrogen. So this one is more towards uh, they want to collaborate with the South Korea companies. Uh, and also I think yeah. they say that their place is like suitable to do this hydrogen manufacturing yeah. kind of like thingy manjiki, uh, which I still cannot phantom in my head yet. Uh, but anyway, they want to collaborate with this uh, Samsung engineer, POSCO and Lotte Chemical to develop these green hydrogen derivative facilities. Uh, sounds very fancy, but I'm not sure that they can do it. Uh, so we shall see that in the future. Yeah. But the, the point of this video is to really highlight to you what which companies will have indirect or direct, you know, effect or they'll be affected by this whole growing of Sabah, uh, uh, Sarawak. Uh, Sarawak, right? Yeah, exactly. Okay, so, so uh, okay, this one is SCR and STR is basically your Sarawak Coastal Road and Second Trunk Road. What it means is basically your infrastructure, like your construction and everything. So these are the few companies that will be benefiting. I believe in total, this contract is about like 6.4 billion ringgit. Uh, they will be awarded to these four and also some of the Sarawak contractor. Uh, and you notice some of the share price also already pumped up already, like KKB, TRC, and uh, SCIB for some sort. Uh, but CMSB is, has been still been very like muted. Uh, but you can see that there's some sort of attention going towards this company because of this Sarawak initiative. Uh, SWG is your Sarawak Water Green. So KKB is part of it also. That's why you notice that there's a little bit of a pump, about 17% in KKB. 
Uh, the other one is KUTS, which is Kuching Urban Transportation System. It's basically like your RTS, some some sort of like that. Uh, and you notice that there's two companies. One is Ibraco, the other one is KKB. Mm. Uh, Ibraco is the one that is has been getting the most traction. I think yeah. probably because they are like a small cat initially. Uh, that's why they got kind of a lot of attention from the public. Uh, and yeah, so this is the transportation. And last but not least, I think there's one more, which is power cable. Of course. Uh, yeah, the power cable guys, uh, I mean, you want to do this like renewable energy kind of thing. So you need more of these, more of these power cable and Skaber is one of them. Uh, obviously, you can see their name is already Sawak Cable Bahar. Yeah, it looks so small, but it's up 250% since the 1st of December. Yep, exactly. And it's like only like a 70 million market cap. It's yeah. very small. Uh, yeah, so that's about it for this entire segment of the Sarawak Team Stocks. This is an entire summary. So if you want to know more about this, you can actually pause the video and yeah. have a look mm. about this. I, I just have my own summary here. I think where Sabah and Sarawak is, is a bit like in some ways, if you look at the top number of the medium income, it's pretty close to Johor and Penang. Mm. But I think when you visit these places, the, the the answer you get if you do a comparison is that no, actually Sarawak feels quite a bit behind mm. right, visually. And the reason why the median income, even though it's similar, is similar, is because of just oil and gas, right? In effect, as far as infrastructure goes, they are probably, you know, call it 15, 20 years or maybe beyond behind uh, Penang and definitely far behind yeah, KL, yeah. right? And so, one way I think about investing in, if I were to invest in Sarawak, the way I would go about it is to say, okay, look, let's transport myself today back 20, 25 years in KL or Peninsula, you can call it. And I would say, okay, what were the stocks that were hot? Right? And of course, you can see now infrastructure. Uh, probably Property, real estate, yeah. banking. These are the guys that are going to do well. So if you see any other, not just the opportunities here, or potential opportunities, but any other opportunities, this is like the a good framework or lens for you to see what's coming up next. And of course, if you want to think even further, then you would start looking at the consumer guys, right? Because once infrastructure uh, in terms of transport and housing has been settled, mm. then people start spending money on food people start spending money on stuff yeah right so you know we have we have a company that we follow like harrison for example yeah. right they, they distribute um, consumer goods, consumer goods. Uh, a lot of right. stuff la, and then way. you have we have uh, we also talk about harboring right where transport transportation of goods yeah. you know should increase over time right there's more of this stuff that coming in people will come in uh Sarawakians who have more uh, spending power and so they want to import stuff, you know, things like that. Mm, yeah. So, yes, yeah. So yes. that's about it. Guys, this is the first time I'm showing you the March update. Yeah. Yeah. So the March update uh, just dropped last week. There was no video last week. So this is the first time you're seeing it uh, unless you follow us on Instagram. Uh, you know, our Faro Pro uh, model portfolio is up uh, 59% mainly due to just two to three companies. Now what is the Fire Pro. Well, Fire Pro is where you get access to our model portfolio. That's one. The second thing is you will get these reports, easy to read 15 minute, less than 15 minute reports that helps shortcut your research journey. So you don't have to go through all the hassle of Googling and reading and all that. Uh, you just read what we write and that uh, should help you a lot with your decisions. But we don't tell you how to, uh, whether you should buy the stock or not. It's just letting you know what the information is out there. Uh, you want to get a taste of what it's about, head over to the free sample section. And as a reminder, we have a, an upcoming webinar where we'll show you actually how we made that 60%. And in fact, in 2024, the first quarter, uh, we are up about 25%. Percent. So we want to share with you uh, exactly how we did it and hopefully how you could uh, replicate it for your own personal portfolio. Uh, this webinar link to sign up is in the description. This is, will happen in less than a week or about a week. 15th of April, 2024, 8.30. Uh, again, it's a free webinar. So hope to see you there. So guys, thanks for staying all the way until the end and I'll see you hopefully in the webinar. But if not, then I'll see you next week. Bye-bye.